Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. As you've already read, this video is going to be a very in-depth beginner guide on how to start Skyrim. This is just my opinion and this is just based on what I've played and how I've played Skyrim. This is my experience only. So I'm not saying that this is the be all end all to Skyrim, <laughs> but this is just my experience and I haven't really watched a ton of videos on how to do this kind of thing. This is self-explored. It's going to be a pretty lengthy video, I'm just warning you now. I played Skyrim for about three or four years now on console mainly. I just started playing on PC. Actually, it's almost been about a year now that I think about it, but it doesn't feel that long. Anyway, so I'm going to actually be using a PS4 controller just simply because I still can't get used to the key controls and I don't know why, it's just... It's just how it is sometimes. The nice thing about Skyrim is that it doesn't matter. It's it's all the same. It's just the controls might be a little bit different. That's about it. So with all of that in mind, let's get into it. Since this is a beginner tutorial, I will be going through how to like do all the gameplay and also um, explain it as well. Um, what the game mechanics are, to my knowledge at least, and um, how the game works. For simplicity's sake, to make a new game, you're gonna go scroll down and click new. And, and yes, you're, you're gonna click yes. So, every single player starts the exact same way. But the biggest thing about Skyrim is that there are so many different choices in the game. So you can turn around. Um, obviously, if you're on PC, use your uh, mouse. If you're on um, console, it's your right um, button, and yeah, it does. It shows up with um, with instructions as well. I'm just elaborating as well as I can. So one thing about Skyrim is that um, there is a lot of lore. So here they're actually telling the storyline. Why do you care? A Nord's last thoughts should be the home. So to give a little bit more context, this guy in front of me with the uh, the blue armor on is called Stormfolk. Um, they're basically a rebellion in Skyrim. Skyrim is a province within Tamriel. And this guy over here is Ulfric Stormcloak. It won't make much sense the first time you start playing it, but um, after you've played it a few times, um, it starts to make a lot more sense. I should probably mention, Ulfric Stormcloak is the leader of the Stormcloaks. So there is... there's ten different races within Skyrim. You can choose any of them, but they all have their own characteristics, I guess you could say, and obviously um, that's what makes them so complex as characters. Take your time, look through them, choose when you want or don't, just pick a random one. I usually go with an elf, but that's just my style. Oh, and to move the face like I just did, it's the same button as uh, when you were looking around. And to, to sorry, to scroll through everything, it's the, the other one. For the peace. So yeah, there isn't really much to do um, skill-wise because it's all the same at this point. So for reference, um, there hasn't been a dragon in Skyrim for several hundreds, if not thousands of years. So this is quite the shock. This is the first time that they've come back in uh, like forever. So you can move around now by using your left joystick. You can look around, again, it's the same one. So obviously this is their way of like teaching you how to do stuff. So Y is your um, PC controls, um, triangle PS4 controls. So to sneak, you just push down on your left joystick. So just follow him, it's really simple. Here is um, some different shows of the different tactics and fighting. So she's using Magicka, magic, whatever, same thing. And then there's obviously this guy, he's got a sword, bow and arrow, and these are all available to the player. So now, your first choice within Skyrim. Who are you gonna go with? Are you gonna go with the Imperials, or are you gonna go with the Stormcloaks? That thing was a dragon, no doubt. Just like the children's stories and the legends. The harbingers of the end times. So yeah, that's why it's such a big deal. He just literally explained why it was such a big deal because of the harbingers of the end times. So to search, you just push X on uh, PS4 and A on PC. But basically to get your armor on, like O, and then go to items. 
then you can go to apparel or you can go to all it doesn't really matter then to equip because i need to equip my fur boots we're gonna push x and you're also going to want to equip a weapon you see how there's a little r there over top of the x beside it that means what what hand your weapon is in so um x to ready weapon on pc and r2 to ready weapon on ps4 so this is the storm cloak armor and right here we have our rough spun tunic so you see here um, just at the bottom down here, there's the armor rating. It says minus 23 beside the armor rating 29. So because I'm wearing the Stormcloak armor right now, and if I were to be equipped and put on this tunic, it would take away 23 points of my armor rating. So we want to have as much armor rating as we can at this point in time. And it's the same thing with the fur boots, but it'll also tell you the type. And so you can see here, there's this little thing here that says light armor. It'll tell you what kind of armor there is. There's light armor and heavy armor and some medium armor. I haven't seen a ton of medium armor, but there is an option. I myself prefer light armor. With light armor, you can sneak better. It makes it more difficult for your enemies to be able to hear you when you're sneaking. So when you're wearing heavy armor, obviously it's gonna be a lot more clangy and all that kind of stuff, but it has a lot more armor rating. So it kind of depends what you're going for. And I'll also mention about the weapons as well. So here, when you go onto your weapon, there is the damage amount, the weight, and the value. So the damage amount is how many points per swing it does. So every single character has a certain amount of points that it has to be able to um, be hit before it can be killed. And um, the weight affects how fast you can swing. So axes are the, I think the second lightest if I remember correctly, it goes swords, axes, um, maces, and then uh, broadswords, if I remember correctly. And I, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a few in between there, but generally speaking, those are comparisons. You see how there's this little blue bar here? That's how much magic you have left. As your skill level goes up, you can increase your magicka, your health, and your stamina, all of which are very important, but obviously health is most important in my opinion. But in here we have our different categories there's different powers so this power came with my character because she is a high elf i'll show you how to do that quickly so the highborn if you enable it you can equip it and then you would push r1 so now we're getting into fighting which is a really big part of skyrim and it's super super simple at this point in time there are different techniques, but the biggest things that you should know is that you need to keep moving and do not get stuck. But to actually hit somebody, you gotta be close enough to them. If you hit like this, just how I've just been doing the continuous swipe like this, that is it's just a regular hit. If you hold down, it's called a power attack. So that will do a lot more damage, and it also has the potential to stagger your enemy, which is a good thing because then they won't be able to hit you. The reason why I am putting up blue sparks and why there's this weird aura around me is because I enabled that power. Going back to this power here, the highborn power, your active effects, it will show you if you're poisoned because it is possible to be poisoned. Um, there's different sicknesses that you can get, but here, Mine is Fortify Magicka because High Elves are born with an extra 50 points. Let's go through a couple of these different spells. So there's your healing spell, so you can actually heal yourself. And so again, there's this little L beside that, that means it's in my left hand. So this is my healing, if you just hold um, L2 for that one because it's in my left hand. We have our Destruction, which is Flames. And then we also have Fury. I don't usually use any illusion spells. Yes, you are going to get a lot of prompts from NPCs who are there to help you. Big part of this game is being able to listen and figure it out. There are quite a few different quests on here where you need to figure it out yourself or Google it. It can be super frustrating sometimes. You can go and loot other people's stuff. It's pretty simple. Um, you can actually look. So see, he's got better armor rating than I do. I would personally take this. I'm gonna take his helmet too. His boots are gonna help too, and his brace is really good. What was my... 
Okay, so that's nine, so it's this, the exact same thing, but it weighs less, right? So it's gonna swing faster. So I'm gonna take it too, because you can also use dual weaponry. So yeah, um, I'll show you a little bit about dual weaponry. But here you can see when I push the left button, I'll swing on the left side. When I'm pushing the right button, I'll swing on the right side. So you can see that she has heavy armor and it will add more armor to you, but it will also add more weight. I personally search every single person, especially because they might have something on them that is needed for the storyline. Um, they also might not, but it's, it's good to check, but they can also have coins on them. Okay, so here's another fighting, fighting one. So I'm gonna show you so, you see how it staggered him? That was a power attack. Here, okay, so this is this is important. You want to take as many of these potions as you possibly can, especially right now. And you want to search the cupboards and all that kind of stuff for gold, anything. I should also mention books in Skyrim are very helpful and they, they actually have stories. Um, so to read your book, you would go to your and scroll down the books and it has a story. It's pretty cool and you can learn things. I don't use food, I just stock up on potions and mostly because I find that um, they weigh less and it doesn't take up as much space and it does the exact same thing except that it actually restores more health. So lock picking. When you approach a lock, it will tell you what level it's at. So you see how it says unlock cage door novice. Novice level is the lowest level, but my trick, and this is something that my brother actually taught me because he is really, really good at playing, well, at least was really, really good at playing Skyrim. This top one that I'm moving right now, the only one that I'm moving is the right joystick, which is the bottom, okay? The top one, this one, this is your left joystick. My technique is to test it. So I'm going to move down here and you see how it's moving, but it stopped there. The little wiggling when it's wiggling like that, it means it's straining and you don't want to keep doing that because it will break your lockpick and you only have a certain number of lockpicks. As soon as you see that, let go. I like to check the three points and then I go in between those points because now I know where it is. So I know it's not over here. It's going to be between here and here. So then I go halfway between there and see it's not there. So we go maybe a little bit more down and clearly the farther down we go it's not working so it's got to be in this upper quadrant here so now there we go we've opened the lock the thing about lock picking is even if you break lock picks you still gain skill this is your skills up here this is your skills menu and you see how my my level one up at the very top has progress on it Everything you do in the game gives you experience points and you level up. I'll show you for example Like that. I still gained experience, but you'll get the hang of it. It just takes some practice. Okay, so this is called a spell tome So spell tomes you go into your books first and then you have to read it But in order to get the knowledge from the spell tome, it destroys the book so there's, there's my new spell. As you notice here, these have zero armor rating, but that's because they're not made for armor. I personally like to wear the hood because I do use Magicka, so it'll increase my Magicka without me needing to level up. So that's a really nice part. But yes, and shields. So you can actually use shields. So first things first is you need to make sure that you don't have anything in your other hand. For blocking, you have to have two hands with a sword. But if I'm going to block, I'm going to hold the opposite side. So what that does is that actually will help you to, to absorb some of the damage. So then you don't take as much damage. That, that doesn't do very much, to be completely honest. If you're blocking with your sword, only your sword, it doesn't do a ton. But it still, it still helps. Every little bit helps. I just personally find it to, um, helpful to actually have destruction, you know, hurt from a distance. Uh, frostbite spiders, you need to be careful with them because they can poison you. So you see how my health is low. Um, drink some of this. But you see how I'm constantly moving? Like I don't stay still. And I do that so that I don't get cornered. Um, because if you stand still, they have a targeted place to attack. 
And I love to take the frostbite venom, um, specifically for one type of fighting tactic. So that lump over there doesn't look like anything, but that's actually a bear. So one of my personal fighting tactics is to do like sneak attacks because what happens is they do more damage they do twice as damage than if you're going in guns blazing so basically in order to load your bow press and hold do not let go at least a few seconds the items if you go into potions and you click on the frostbite venom that we just got it'll ask you if you want to poison longbow press yes you know it's it's going to be like one big power attack right so you're doing a sneak attack you're adding venom on top of that when you aim you see how there's a dash a dot and then a dash that's your aiming doesn't necessarily matter where you hit your target it's not headshot will only kill in this game it's kind of just shoot kill the thing you've got to be really careful about is if you miss it will draw their attention so i'm going to purposefully miss to show you first off so you see actually i didn't miss sorry i completely hit them and what i meant to do was miss because what happens is you see how that eye opened again that means that you're detected and that your enemy is searching for you so if the eye is completely closed like this it means that you're hidden if it's completely open and fully aware then it means that they know where you are so um take these just so that i can show you later on so you see how when i come up to it it's going to tell me where i'm where it's going so to skyrim means it's going to outside but you see how there's like that down pointing arrow at the top of my screen that is the location where your marker is so if we go down to our map this is where we're going it's telling you where to go and which direction to go pick up flowers like this one and again i'll explain why later um that is guardian stones and we're gonna go get one of them see that thing down there below yeah that's called the guardian stones so this, these are the guardian stones um they give you advantages in the game personally unless you're going for something specific i would go with the warrior skill there's more than than just these three there's I think nine three locations three at each location there are these lovely things called wolves so anyway this is the second town you will come to this town no matter which side you choose if you choose the imperial side or if you choose to go with the stormcloak like i did so the red one is imperial the blue one is stormcloak that's just the easiest way to think about it won't be long before you'll be joining the fight yourself so the fight that he's talking about is um, obviously between the Imperials and the Stormcloaks, if, if you didn't understand that. It took me a while to understand that, um, just because there's so many moving parts in this game. So yeah, now it's going to give you a new quest. Get as many of these random things around the world as you can. You can catch butterflies. Yeah, so enemies will appear as red dots. Um, like that wolf has. So here, really good example of our more conversation. So we have a few choices that we can choose out of. So we could offer gold, we could intimidate the guard, which I personally wouldn't recommend at this point in time because your speech level is quite low. And so things like this aren't likely to work. So we leveled up, so we're level two now. I personally like to save my levels up until I'm just about dead because what happens is when I'm fighting and you're dying you can come to this and level up and it fills up your health your stamina and your magicka so this is called an, an arcane enchant I'm going to show you how to enchant and this is how I make a lot of money and it's a very good um in my opinion it's it's a pretty decent way and also it also brings up your enchantment level quite a bit just because you're enchanting stuff constantly so what you do is you just take this thing that is literally gonna make no difference and then you will combine everything so you need to have your three things you need to have a soul gem a filled soul gem an enchantment to be able to do that and we did that by disenchanting and an item to enchant and certain items can um, only be enchanted by certain things and certain enchantments can only enchant certain things. But then what I do is I actually go and I will sell this ring. The next thing is the alchemy lab. 
Um, so in order to do alchemy, you need to have ingredients. And the ingredients are those things that we've been picking up this entire time. That's why you do that. So in order to learn at least one ingredient, so you see how it says unknown, all four of these? So each item will have four qualities. They could do damage to your stamina. They could increase your health. So each thing will have something about them. And, um, to learn about it, a really, really easy way to do that, whether than, rather than just guessing and throwing everything together, is to eat them. <laughs> it won't do enough damage to actually kill you, so don't worry about that. So you just eat it, and just go through and eat at least one of every new thing. You have now these different things, and it will say, yes, okay. This is the ingredient that has restore health. So see now how we don't, we only have three unknowns. We have one known, which is really good. Um, just pick your ingredients and then you're gonna craft. It's the same thing as if you were crafting with an enchanter, it's a square button. So this is our made potion. And I make a lot of money again, off of making these in free ingredients that I find all over the world and combining them and selling them because potions, especially once you get like the really potent ones, they are worth quite a bit. So to sell stuff, you need to ask, what do you have for sale? I've shown this a few times before, but I've never actually specifically said it. This is my stuff. This is her stuff. If I was trying to sell her something, um, say I wanted to sell her a potato. I'm just gonna sell her that potato. But the thing about transactions like this is that they will try to, so barter, it's called barter, it's a skill. And um, because we're at a lower level and we don't have any objects to help us barter, then we are basically at the low end of the stick. We're gonna get the lowest amount possible for that item. So in our potions, if we look at our poison of damage, stamina the value is 30 so that's the value and when we go in and check her value is going to be different than what ours is she's only going to give us 10 for that what i do personally is i stock up on potions these healing potions i don't have enough money but um normally what i would do is like buy a craft ton of them. So how many? I can only buy one. I can only afford to buy one, but that's fine. So she has a lot of different potions, and um, so this one is for cure diseases. So before, when we were talking about an actual spider that bit us, and it said you've contracted a disease, um, there's a couple different diseases that you can get. She was talking about one, there's like rock joint, um, different things, and they affect you differently. So some of them will make your stamina regain slower some of them will make you swing slower and this is the Everything general goods store he's kind of creepy he honestly is probably one of my least favorite characters in the game not gonna lie oh yeah and there's also beggars yes. you can give them uh gold um there's yeah oh oh and the other thing about that is um you can get the gift of charity um but it increases your a skill for a certain amount of time. It's just a, basically a little gift for being generous. Um, the next thing I should probably talk to you about while we're here is smithing. Super simple way. You can walk up and ask, need any help around the forge, and then they'll take you through how to actually smith. So this is the tanning rack. In order to create leather, you need to be able to tan your, your hide, essentially. <laughs> All of this leather came from that those wolves and that bear that we killed. So we need to create a few more leather strips. And now we should be ready to actually smith something. So using the forge you can create different kinds of things. And once you level up and get better at smithing, you will open up different types of things to smith. So for example, you can open up elven smithing um, or dwarven smithing. Eventually, once you get better 
Um, you can also craft building materials, you can craft jewelry once you have diamonds and um, the right type of stuff. So right now we don't have the right type of stuff. You need to have certain ingot and also you need to, so you need to have ores. So you have ores that turn into ingot. So when you have your ores, you use a smelter like this to smelt your ore into ingot, which I don't have any, but there's tons of different options here. We're just gonna make something super simple. We're just gonna make something leather. I'm gonna make leather armor because I'm sick of walking around in imperial stuff. This is the workbench. So the workbench improves armor. In order to improve enchanted items, you need to have a high enough smithing level, and that is very high. Improve literally anything here. So once you improve it, there's different levels. This is the fine level. See, now we have a better armor rating. So what happens when we add the, um, when we upgrade our stuff, like how it has this brackets fine leather armor, it's a better leather. It's a better fit. It is um, going to protect you more. We can sell stuff to her because she buys weapons and she also sells weapons. I usually don't buy stuff because it is so overpriced. I can just find a decent sword or something off of a bandit that I killed. Complete quests and I'm able to get some nice weapons. But from her you can buy... See how she has this ore here? And I'm gonna buy the lockpick. Buy as many lockpicks as you can, as you possibly can find, which should have mentioned before while we're at Battle Thors. But yeah, so this is just basically telling you what it is. So now you've leveled up, you have the choice to choose between any of these, and I highly recommend um, getting your health up first, and then then your stamina. My magicka is up right now because, because I'm an elf. Because I'm a high elf, I have that extra boost. So if it's green, it's either being um, boosted from either an item that you're wearing, like a ring or a piece of armor that's been enchanted, or you are like me and you have that extra boost from the very beginning because of your race. Um, so these perks, so it says up at the top perks to increase. So perks are, I either like to boost my one-handed because that's something I'm using quite often um, at this point in time. Two-handed is for two-handed weapons, which, um, like, your really big axes, your war hammers, like, it says down below. So, you increase the perk. So now my one-handed weapons are going to do 20% more damage than they usually would. And you have to have a certain amount of skill set to be able to level up. So, you see at the bottom how it says my one-handed is currently at 19 and it requires a 30, I'm not there yet. I usually like to keep an extra perk just in case because sometimes you get stuck when you're trying to complete a quest uh, because it is too hard. So if you come in here, sometimes if you're at the right level, you can use your perk to make it easier or you can drink a potion or you can put on an item like the enchanted item, but especially things like this, for example, like this, it helps you with those skill sets. So, but you remember how I was talking about the smithing? This is how you do that. So you need to have a certain amount of points. So now I could create steel. So currently I could only create leather or iron. An arcane blacksmith improve enchanted items. This is what you required. You can get up to glass smithing and dragon armor, which is really, really cool. Glass smithing is pretty much as high as you can get with light armor as it gets. Everything else, dragon armor and daedric armor, these are all heavy set armors. Yeah, so that's that in a nutshell. It's kind of confusing. It's a very complex game. First thing I want to show you is a quest to get an actually decent weapon. There's plenty of other amazing weapons out there within the game, but those are all made for a much higher level. And this one you can get at any level. You can get, yeah. So um, you can come into the innkeepers and then you go to 
Maybe you're looking for work. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. So the bounty, it's not the right one. So I'm out currently trying to find a place where I can show you the weapon that I would recommend for very low levels. Okay, so this is Silent Moon's camp, I'm sure of it. In this camp, there are bandits. So bandits are obviously not very good and they attack people. And so often the Jarls of each hold will have bounties out. Okay, that's what it was. So these are mud crabs. These are another thing to watch out when you're, when you're by water. Mud crabs are, um, they're not very harmful, but if there's a bunch of them, yeah, you can certainly get killed. My trick for working with magic casters specifically is to not use magic, um, but they do cast wards. So he had that aura around him. They cast wards, they're called, which can actually block your magic from them, or at least some of the damage. It's almost always better to use a weapon on these types if you can get close enough, right? Because sometimes they're so overpowered that you cannot get close enough. Up here, if you go up into here, there's going to be more. I'm warning you that now. There's going to be more in here. See, this guy, he's being a jerk. So the one thing that we can do, because now our, we're getting low again, um, we can either use magic and heal while we're walking, but then we, we risk being killed if a big blow comes. So what we could do instead, you know, just drink some potions, and then I like to poison when I can. Here it is. I was like, where did it go? But it glitched. So this is the Lunar Sword. Because we're at such a low level, we will only get one weapon. When you're at a higher level, you could get two or even higher level you could get the three of them this here is the notes on the lunar it talks about the power that this particular forge will put into its weapons while the moons are out it will burn the target for 10 points so now you have extra damage being done at night super 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 simple to get no major quest lines need to be done just get it right off the bat Anyway, and the next thing I wanted to show you is books, certain books, they can give you more skill set. So my smithing was increased by reading the book, but it's really handy. So I just as a general rule, pick up the books. Really good way to get around is to use the carriage. So you just you say, I want to hire a carriage, and then you have to pay gold for whichever one you want to get to. So what I do, and um, highly recommend it this way. So you say you need to get somewhere over here. So I would buy a ticket to Solitude and then travel from Solitude to that place rather than walk from some other place. Here you can buy a horse. You can also steal a horse. Wouldn't recommend it because um, you will have the guards after you. They cost $5,000 each. Some of them I think cost a little bit more. So say we want to change our quest. PS4 remote, it is options. PC, it's escape to get to here. We don't want to do this one at this point in time. We want to tick off. So in order to tick off, we just press X or click on it. And then um, because we want to get to a specific one, we can come into our miscellaneous and in order to enable it again you just click on it but for the miscellaneous ones you need to um make sure that you have the miscellaneous enabled because otherwise it's it's not going to show up right like it's going to be ticked but it's not going to be show up if it's a miscellaneous quest the next one that i'm going to show you requires you to kind of pick a side and so you remember how i was talking about the storm cloaks and everything choose a side it's up to you, doesn't matter where you go or what side you choose, you will end up with the same quest, which is what matters. So if you're going to go to the Stormcloaks, you need to go to Windhelm. And if you are going to side with the Imperial, then you need to go to Solitude. It doesn't matter. I will show you both. First off, I'm going to show you Windhelm. 
I'm not actually going to complete this quest. In order to actually to the place, you need to climb in back, like he said. Normally you have a quest, and I didn't get it. I'm not sure why. Normally you have a miscellaneous quest that says, um, side with the Stormcloaks or the Imperials. If you want to join the Stormcloaks, you need to talk to Ulfric Stormcloak. So it's this, this guy right here is who you're going to talk to. The next place we need to go is Solitude. Now we're going to go and find the, what's his name, the commander of the Imperial Army. I think this is General Tullius. Do you have some reason to be here, citizen? So yeah, this is how you get this quest line. Each side, no matter which side you choose, has a test. If you're going to join the Stormcloak Rebellion, then it's going to be a quest where you have to go out and kill an Ice Serpent. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Legget Ricca has a special assignment for you. Tell me again why Welcome I'm wasting men chasing Welcome to the Legion, there. Auxiliary. Listen up. Ulfric's right hand man. So yes, this is exactly what we're looking for. So now we have the quest that I've been trying to get. Okay. So where we're at right now is we're gonna actually go into the ruins. Yeah, so if something glitches like that because she wasn't there yet, just you can try waiting for a minute. You can try rebooting your game and rebooting your computer. Skyrim is quite old now. It's like, I think, 10 years old. So obviously it's gonna have some bugs and glitches, but not all of them have fixes. That's the problem. Yeah, that's about the biggest thing I can suggest is look around on the tables and look for chests and stuff. That will definitely help. So that's the big thing is if you have friends, let them help you. The other thing to be aware of is that to quick save quite often, because when you die, you go back to the last save. It will automatically save you any time you go into a building or come out of a building. But in between there, I think it depends on your settings. So my settings are set at... So yeah, right here, you can change your save settings. And also over here, if you're having too much trouble with um, killing a boss, or you're just getting beaten up and you keep dying, you can lower the difficulty and so that'll make your um enemies a lot easier to beat the other thing while you're in ruins like this there's going to be a lot of different urns and stuff and a lot of them have a lot of these little three pieces or two pieces of gold it's a really really simple easy way to get money be careful men there's bound to be more up ahead so when they say things like that, they, um, they're warning you. Take those, take those hints and use them to your advantage. Yeah, the other thing to be careful about is if you do actually, you can kill them. There is no such thing as, as friendly fire unless it's an NPC that cannot be killed. So this is called a draugr. Um, so the other thing is, if you're having trouble seeing, because um, that is definitely a problem in these types of places, there are torches that you can get. You just have to find it. It'll be in your mystic, mystic, miscellaneous items, and then you just put it in your hat. Pretty simple. And you can actually use it to like light people on fire and block and stuff like that. It's, it's actually kind of nice. These types of things, you're going to just have to wing it, okay? Just run through. Um, make sure you have your armor on. And then on the other end, there's going to be a lever. And then you just have to activate it. It'll look either like that, or it'll be a pull chain up on the wall somewhere. And then it'll stop. Uh, but that's the nice thing about these types of places, is that there's definitely chests around and hidden items. And I, I don't even know where all of them are. I'm not gonna even lie. I probably missed like 20 of them. There it is. Okay. See what you can figure out, hmm, what is that? Some kind of stone claw? I wonder what it's used for. So, a lot of Skyrim is being able to figure out these different puzzles. And I'm gonna let you in on a really, really vital secret, I guess you could say. Um, it's gonna help you with every single one of these types of quests. So, for this particular puzzle, 
you see there's these different rings on here, right? So there's the, the claw that I just picked up. So it's super, super simple. Um, you look at the claw. See how there's the carvings on there? That's, that's the carvings that you put in the rings. So it's gonna go wolf, dragonfly, dragon. So our outer ring used to be a wolf. Inner ring needs to be a dragonfly. That's not quite it, so we just keep going. And this one needs to be dragon. So that's wolf, dragonfly, dragon. And then we need to activate the keyhole and it'll automatically take it out, so you just push the button. Good job. Let your NPCs work for you as well. So just try and play keep away as much as you can and shoot from a distance like what I'm doing. If you have bow and arrow and you want to use that, go ahead. Um, I just find it harder to aim. Sometimes they get stuck like this, but that's fine. This is the crown. And I absolutely love this pose. I, I adore the person who decided to use this pose. This guy is super freaking OP as hell. My suggestion, make sure you're at full health before actually attacking him. Um, Cause that's how you will activate it is to attack him. But you, see, you hear that sound? This is a huge part of Skyrim. So these are called shouts. They're gonna give you words. When you're in ruins, make sure you look for these because they're going to be around Skyrim and all in the different ruins, okay? You will hear that. It's a very trademark and they're trying to grab your attention. So now would be a great save point before you actually start, you know, attacking things. You can do it from afar. You can walk up to him and start killing him. But there's going to be a bunch of the Draugr. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to drop one of those because I don't need two of them. And then I'm going to... use my steel arrows because they have more damage and I don't think this is going to do anything because he's a very high leveled character but you can always try okay so do you see how much like holy crap he has a lot of health points that we're gonna have to get over so, now he's gonna have buddies, and we're gonna run into problems. They are hard to kill. He will knock you over, and he will put your NPCs down. Your NPCs cannot be killed. Um, some of them can. Don't take that always. But see, this guy is really hard boss. He's not even trying to attack me at this point, which is nice. So I've staggered him, thank goodness. I'm getting lucky on this one. Okay. You see when he does that wacha thing? That? It? Um, you have to be careful about that because you can lose your weapon. We now have the Jagged Crown. Instead of taking it back, what we're going to do is we're going to wear it. Because it's going to add our armor rating. And it is a heavy armor, but that's okay. For sake of being at a really low level, this is something really good to have. Not to mention it has a lot of freaking value. So a lot of the things about these ruins is that there is usually a short way out. Instead of having to go back the entire way, look around a little bit. There's usually, almost always, another way out. But it doesn't open from the other side. The very last thing I'm going to show you is the main storyline quest. So we're going to Bleak Falls Barrel. For reference, if you attack a chicken, you will get run after by guards, so don't attack chickens. I speak from experience. I'm sorry, chickens. Okay. Now, there's gonna be bandits here, and I've already alerted them to my existence. So, unfortunately, um, this isn't gonna work as well as I wanted it to, but whatever. And yes, you can attack on horseback. 
it's just really hard, not gonna lie. Your horse, if you own the horse, it'll attack for you. <laughs> you just have to have really good aim. So now I'm gonna use a sneak attack to actually kill these two, if possible. Son of a- okay, so he moved while I was trying to. So they're looking for me. And see, they have like no idea where I am. Now they're, they're starting to get an idea. Okay, they found me. Okay, this is a skeever. They're around here, then usually in- they're just like a rodent thing. And they, they will hurt you, so you have to be careful. Um, especially if there's a whole bunch of them and you're at a really low level. <laughs> Um, okay, so now we're at our second puzzle. So there's usually two different types of puzzles in Skyrim. It's one of this type or it's the other type. If you don't know what the um, puzzle answer is, you can Google it. Um, just double check where you are. You're in Bleak Falls Barrow. So you would Google Bleak Falls Barrow um, puzzle answer and usually you can find this is probably like the easiest one so um, usually you can find the answers in either a tomb like a, a room before you actually come into the puzzle but in this case it's in, in the same room so it goes snake snake whale as we can see here and we just go over here and we activate the pillar so snake snake whale and just for sake of this um i'm just gonna mess it up on purpose because i want you to see what happens when you mess up so be careful because these this can kill you it will shoot stuff at you and it can kill you, especially if you're at a lower level, it can do some pretty good damage. So, um, it's not that big of a deal really, but make sure you're saved. <laughs> That's all. So make sure you saved. So I'll show you how to use a scroll really quickly. Um, they're going to be, they're a type of magic, um, but you don't actually need to learn how to use it. So scrolls have their own special little menu in your inventory and um they all do different things there's um some that do damage some of them like this one it will um you can use it on your friends to help them gain back health because um your friends can get damaged and um so yeah i'm just going to show you how to use this one It's pretty cool, not gonna lie. So you have to equip it. And then what you do... So this is one, okay? So you're holding on to it. So that's one of them. And then we're gonna do a call to arms one. Some of them use two hands, some of them only use one. So then to charge it is the same thing as if you're using a bone arrow and you need to kind of charge it up a bit so that it, it goes farther um you need to hold it both down and it's gonna cast and it needs to be ready so this is how you know it's ready and then you let go so those are the two different types of scrolls there's different options within the game and that's what i actually really like about skyrim but you can kill people who maybe aren't supposed to be killed. If they have more storyline, they actually can't be killed. In that case, it's not actually a very wise decision to actually try and kill them. Um, because then you're gonna have guards after you if you're in a city, um, that kind of thing. But this character, you can either kill him or let him down, and then you're gonna have to kill him later. Um, there's just no choice. So I just say, kill him now while he's not running away from you and you can actually get at him pretty quickly. Um, then, now this is part of what we need. We need this claw to complete that puzzle, right? 
um, in your items, because there is a book here, I highly recommend if they have a journal on them to open it and read it because it'll give you that information that you need. And because I already know what I'm doing, I've done this quest so many different times. Okay, now's the tricky part, okay? We're getting into burials where we need to actually go and kill the dragon. If you do a one-shot kill and you kill him first, it will not wake up the other dragger. And you can kill him off the bat. You can actually sneak past them. You can actually sneak past them and not kill them. But at this low of a level of a sneak, it's really, really, really difficult to do that. Unless you're a vampire, which has very, very OP as hell sneak scale. Like, you can pretty much sneak past anything you want to do. Anything you wanted to. Um, it's pretty difficult to do that. Or if you're a thief, um, when you get up into the Thieves Guild quests and stuff like that, um, this thing here is a trigger. So you see this gate here? It's a trap. So what's gonna happen when I step on this is it's coming at me and it's hit me now, right? So if you can avoid it, avoid it. Okay, that was lucky. So you see up ahead, there's a draugr. And they can, yes, casting spells can, they can hear that. So that's part of sneaking. The other part of sneaking is how slow you're moving, what the enemy's line of sight is, and how well they can hear. And also your armor. See, when you successfully sneak, your progress goes up, because I have successfully sneaked now. So, my other technique for killing Draugr is actually sneaking up to them if you can before they get up you can go up like this just give them a good whack like that if you sneak and use a one-handed weapon like that it will do damage it does three times damage which is actually really cool now see that's normally what it's like but if I can get this guy's attention and pull him into this trap here. There we go. Awesome. So that was awesome. That was super cool. One of my favorite things. <laughs> so use the environment to your ad advantage, just like I did. And you only got a one shot, so you got to think about it, right? So use use your smarts. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can also... Um, <laughs> you remember how I was telling you about those ores and how you could use it in the smelter? Um, yeah, so you can use the pickaxe to actually start mining. It's pretty cool. And then you have your own ores and stuff. I sometimes do, depending on what the ore is. Um, if it's a rare ore that I usually can't find. Okay, so we don't need to worry about any of this. Sometimes there are coffins lined along here and there are Draugr in them. So just be aware of that. But this case there isn't. So in this case, we're looking for the golden um, claw. So it's not going to be the same password, I guess you could say, every single time. So this one is bear, dragonfly, owl. Bear, dragonfly, owl. Bear, dragonfly, owl. Bear, dragonfly, owl. Awesome. And you don't need to have the the claw equipped or anything it just does it by itself as long as you push the button so now we have our unrelenting force so that completed one of our quests now now we need to kill this dude he's an overlord great 
which actually I don't think it's even that bad as a Scourge. This is not as bad as I expected it to be, because we're able to use our power attacks to knock him off, but there we go. Alright, so there's a little bit more to this quest line, and we're gonna do that now this next part we've just got to go to the location it's kind of like the last one we did with the um we're gonna have backup which is really nice um kind of like the last one where we just meet and then we'll go to that location um so the thing about fighting dragons is that they can be really hard to fight when they are up in the air unless you have really really good aim i wouldn't recommend it just Either when you get high enough level, conjure a flame and her notch, because you can get spell books, and eventually you'll be able to do that. And then the flame and her notch will be able to, you know, help kill it with you. Or if you have a um, follower, they can help you with that as well. Um, and my tactic personally is wait till they land and then go attack as hard as you possibly can for as long as you can keep them and you <laughs> yeah so he's gone up so when he's up in the air take the time to restore yourself keep your healing on when needed and make sure you follow them Here, he's landed again, and doesn't stay landed, so part, part of it is following him a bit. Just use as many power attacks as you possibly can, just hit, 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 while you have the chance. There. Now he's dead, okay? So, we can search the dragon. And there is dragon bone, which you can sell. Um, they weigh a lot, so um, I just usually take one or two and sell them. So now, watch this, this is really important. So, this is a huge part of Skyrim, is being able to use these shouts. So, we've learned Unrelenting Force. And I'm going to show you how to use your shouts. Super, super simple. It's like using those powers. So, it's, um... That RB, or R1. And we've used that. And it takes time. You are dragonborn. In the very oldest tales, back from when there were still dragons in Skyrim, the dragonborn would slay dragons and steal their power. That's what you did, isn't it? Absorb the dragon's power. Well, you can shout now. You couldn't before, right? That can only mean one thing. You must be dragonborn. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because once you have these, you can get more. And now, after this point, you're able to actually go to a dragon, absorb its soul, and we don't have any dragon souls, but see how you would normally have like a number here? You need to um, be able to have the dragon souls, so each dragon has one soul, obviously. So if you kill one dragon, you're gonna get one dragon soul. And then now we could unlock our slow time. So, the reason why I'm showing you this now, and the reason why I recommend doing this now, is get that done early. Get as many dragon souls as you can, complete as many quests as you can in ruins, so you can get more words, and then, then you have a bunch of shouts to use at, um, when you need to use them, and then I don't touch this anymore, this main quest, 
until I've got as much as I want finished or I get bored from other quest lines. Okay. That's, that's it for me, I guess. 